How's it going everyone? I am Dylan, this is All You Can Board, and I am back for the second Marvel Champions review in the last couple days because we got two packs released at the same time. Spider-Ham, which I just put out a couple days ago, if you haven't checked that out, I'm putting the link up above. Uh, and the one we're gonna look at today, which is a spider, which is, it, it, it seems like it shouldn't be a weird thing to say, but the way it's spelled uh, is definitely is. So this is a alternate version of Spider-Man that uh, is using Penny Parker instead of Peter Parker. And she, her Spider-Man is a, a mech suit. She goes into a mech suit. Uh, if you've played Overwatch, it's kind of like, um, oh, I shouldn't have even brought this up because I can't remember the name of the hero. But there's a hero in there that is in a mech suit and after it takes too much damage, she jumps out and you end up playing a hero that doesn't have the mech suit. Kind of similar what's going on with the hero uh, and alter ego thing here. So the, the new feature in this pack is normally we have an alter ego on one side and a hero on the other side and we're flipping between them. This time we have two separate cards, one for the alter ego, one for the hero because the alter ego is basically jumping into the hero side, the mech suit, to basically pilot it. So a little bit of a different thing going on. We also have some uh, really low hand sizes that are mitigated with some other things that we'll get into. So overall, it's a pretty interesting pack with some new elements coming in. It's definitely not uh, a beginner pack based on everything that we're seeing here in the same way that maybe like Spider-Ham was, but I don't think it's also either that too complicated where you have to have like an advanced level knowledge of Marvel Champions to enjoy it. So we're going to jump into it and we're going to start with the alter ego, which is Penny Parker. So Penny Parker has hit points of 14, very high hit points, but a hand size of four on the alter ego side, which is very low for the alter ego, recovery of four. Her ability here is psychogenetic uh, compatibility, set up, put a spider suit into play, inactive side face up. So before we even go on to the rest of this card, I'm gonna quickly put up the inactive side of the spider suit just so you can understand that it really isn't doing anything while it's there. So the support it's a support card that basically is taking up a support slot, not taking up a support slot, you have infinite support slots, but it's, it's going to be there underneath your hero card. Uh, permanent, this card's printed text box cannot be treated as if we're a blank, so it cannot be blanked out. Uh, and the ability here is return to base, force interrupt. When you flip to this side, flip spider to Penny Parker, detach Penny Parker from here, removing all counters on her and cards and cards attached to her to this card. So basically what that's saying is, is when you're in hero side, which is the other side of this card, and you decide you wanna to go to alter ego, this becomes an inactive spider suit that is basically just in play unmanned, uh, or unwomaned, I guess, uh, and uh, and not being used whatsoever. And then Penny Parker detaches, and that is the alter ego side. So it's basically uh, that's basically what it's explaining. So that's all you have to know is that when you go to alter ego, this becomes an inactive permanent underneath your alter ego card. Your alter ego card is the separate Penny Parker we've been looking at, and she then enters play. So going back to Penny Parker, she does have one other ability, which is maintenance, and maintenance is really good. So alter ego action, exhaust spider suit to draw two cards. Now because you have such a low hand size of four, drawing two cards is a very important thing to do whenever you, whenever possible. It's not quite as effective as if you had, if this, if this had a six card hand on the alter ego side like a lot of heroes do, and you have this way to draw two cards, that would be ridiculously good. It's still good obviously to mitigate the fact that you have a low hand size, but it's not gonna you know uh, lead to these these very large hands that it would in other situations. Uh, so basically, you, you, that spider suit that, that is inactive doesn't have any abilities, it's not doing anything, but you can use it for maintenance by exhausting it. Okay, so if we flip over to the other side of Penny Parker, we've got Spider, and now this is uh, basically her, uh, her acting as a pilot, jumping into the mech suit. So you'll notice here it says, uh, permanent. This card's printed text box cannot be treated as if we're blank. Same thing we saw before. Suit up is the ability. So force to interrupt when you flip to this side, flip spider suit to its active side as well. So you're essentially flipping two cards when you want to go to hero form. Attach this card to spider suit, moving all counters on this card or cards attached to this card to spider suit. So again, it, seem, it might seem complicated in the way that it reads it, but essentially you have this alter ego card in play. When you would flip to go to hero side, Instead of the hero side being on the back, you're now taking this and attaching it to your hero card as an upgrade because that's Penny attached to her suit and then that's your hero side. So it seems complicated, but honestly, when you start using it, you realize, okay, it's it's really just a, a way to have two backsides on this card and, and kind of thematically tie into the, the pilot getting into the mech. So let's go to the final thing, which is the spider suit, the hero side. Uh, great stat line, twos across the board. Uh, sync ratio, or I should have mentioned, the hand size actually reduces again down to three, so you have a very low hand size here. Uh, but the sync ratio ability is where you start getting some mitigation here. So resource, exhaust and interface upgrade you control, generate that upgrades resources. So this is how you offset the fact that you have a low hand size. Now it offsets only to a, a certain degree because even though you're, you have a way to get resources, you still don't have access to as many 
possible cards to play in your hand. Like if you have a six card hand, there's six possible cards to play and you have six resources to use. Even if you have all the interface cards out, or if you, let's say you have three interface cards out, yes, you still have six resources to use, but you only have them to use on three cards. So you're still in a bit of a lower situation. You still wanna try to find a way to you know mitigate that aspect and get more cards into your hand, but at least sync ratio is gonna give you the ability you need to be able to pay for a bunch of different cards, especially the expensive ones in your hand that with a three card hand size, you would never be able to play. So uh, overall, the stat line is really good. The hit points are really good. Obviously the hand size is not, but there will be ways to make up for that that we'll get into. So all around, I'm really happy with the stat line and uh, and it's almost a fun puzzle to try to get around the low hand size and the, kind of in the same way that it is in Iron Man. Obviously that's just a little bit different because you're building that hand size up as you go. All right, let's jump into the spider cards. So the first one we're gonna look at is the new signature ally and this is Venom, uh, but the mechanized version of Venom. So this is a four cost ally, three health, one thwart, one attack, one consequential damage. Venom gets plus one thwart and plus one attack for each sim counter on her. So what are sim counters? Here response, after Venom enters play, you play one sim counter on her for each resource generated by Spider Suit's sync ratio ability to pay for her. So essentially, when you play Venom, you are hoping to use as much of the sync ratio ability as you possibly can, because every time you do that, you're gonna be boosting Venom's thwart and attack by one. So you might've seen the, uh, the stat line been like, this is a ridiculously low stat line for a four uh, cost and you'd be right that is it is uh, just as those base stats you would not want to play this card but if suddenly you're able to use the sync ratio ability and pay for three resources with it to get three sim counters suddenly you're doing four thwart and four attack on each of those with only a single consequential damage so that is ridiculously good so the the big thing here is it's going to the power level of this card has so much potential but it's going to be completely dependent on the situation in which you play her um, hopefully you have enough sim counters uh on her like uh, produced by the sync ratio ability Sorry, I should have said, hopefully you have enough interface cards in play to produce enough sync, uh, uh, sim counters to make this worth it. And if you do, it is a massive, massive boost. Having this out with like even three thwart, three attack is really, really good. Um, you're able to get a ton done and still take a take a hit if you want to, to block with Venom. So very good card, but again, it's gonna be dependent on your sync ratio and your interface cards. Then we've got three copies of All Systems Go. All Systems Go is a one cost event that says Hero Action, choose ready each interface upgrade you control or search your deck and discard a pile for an interface upgrade and add it to your hand. Now the top one may seem like the flashier ability and for sure it is because readying every single interface card you have means that you now have a bunch that you can use for resources again, you can pay for a whole bunch more stuff or if you've already done that, you've already paid for something, now you've refreshed them and you can use them for their actual abilities uh, perhaps. So you can get way more done that turn. It is flashier, however, I do wanna stress that the bottom of this card is very, very crucial, especially because there's three of these in the deck. Uh, there are not a ton of interface cards in, in this deck, and they are so important to everything that Spider's doing. So if you end up with a game where you're not drawing them for a while, you're gonna be so uh, you know behind where you'd wanna be with this hero. This is one of those cards that essentially, uh, you know, there's three of them, they as, can essentially act as three um, interface grabbers, right? That's basically what they are. So you have now an additional three chances uh, on top of the uh, original, I think it's four interface cards. So now there's seven cards that can get you an interface card. So that's basically what it's doing is it's giving you more opportunities in your draws to get cards that are going to set your kit up where you want it to be. Very, very important. And once you have your kit set up, this card doesn't become useless because it has the top ability. So in the early game, you're likely gonna wanna use this for the bottom ability as much as possible. And then later in the game, once you have that kit up, all you're gonna be doing is the top of this and you're gonna be having massive turns because of it. Very important card and you, it's good that it has the situational aspect to it where it's one thing in the early game, one thing in the late game, it never really becomes a dead card. Next up, we've got two copies of Rapid Deployment. This is a two cost event, hero action, remove three threat from a scheme, but if you paid for this card using a resource generator with sync ratio, remove three threat from a scheme again. Awesome card. Um, again, the, the, you're basically doubling up the card and you're, you're, you can, Think of it as pay, paying it twice, but the second time you're paying it for free. Uh, only all you have to do is just use the sync ratio ability. Uh, th that means you can target the same uh, scheme twice. You can do six threat removal on one scheme, or you can now split it up and do three here, three there. That versatility, or the fact that you can remove six threat for two, uh, makes this card ridiculously good. Uh, I use this so many times uh, on uh, situations where I had multiple side schemes in play to help mitigate it across the board. And then I was, at the time I was also using Spider-Ham uh, to basically, uh, I can't, what's the name of the card? I, 
I'm so bad at remembering names of cards on the spot. It's so funny. And then I watch the video back when I'm editing it, and I'm like, God damn it, Pass Dylan. Like, how did you not remember that? Uh, there's that one new Justice card that I, I reviewed that I really, really liked in Spider-Ham that essentially removes uh, uh, threat from multiple side schemes all at once. I was able to use Rapid Deployment to kind of get a big chunk off and then use that card to finish it off, which is really, really good. So Rapid Deployment is a really solid card for its ability to spread out your threat removal or to do a big chunk for really cheap onto one awesome card. Next up, we've got two copies of Web Trap. So Web Trap is a two cost event. This is the attack version, kind of what we just saw. Deal five damage to an enemy, but if you pay for this card using a resource generated from sync ratio, stun that enemy. Uh, I would always hit the stun on this. Uh, again, the only time I wouldn't is if I had this in my like opening hand and I hadn't had a chance to build on my kit yet, so I couldn't use sync ratio. But otherwise, two costs to do five damage and stun an enemy is really, really good. The stun being added on there is such a big deal uh, because it's a cheap card, it's a cheap way to stun, and you're getting the five damage through. So yes, it's not as flashy as the ones that, you, hey, I'm doing eight damage for two, or seven damage for two, or eight damage for three, whatever, but it is consistently going to stun the enemy and deal damage, which, which means you're going to get a chunk of that uh, health down and be safe on the next villain's turn. Really solid card. All right, this may be my favorite card uh, in the hero cards, or at least it was one of the most effective cards. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a better way to word it. It's one of the more effective cards in this uh, in these hero cards. And this is Ant-Man Uncle Ben. So this is a one-cost support that says, Action, exhaust Ant-Man Uncle Ben, and discard the top two cards of your deck, or the top three cards if you're in alter ego form, and add each spider card discarded this way to your hand. The reason this is so important is you have such a low hand size, so you're looking for every opportunity you possibly can to get more cards into your hand. Normally with support cards like this, it'll say alter ego action. You have to have gone to alter ego form to take advantage of it. Usually they're really good, but there's that, that caveat that you have to be an alter ego. This one is effective in both hero and alter ego form to either add potentially up to two or up to three cards to your hand. And all you, all you have to do is discard one of those cards and have it be a spider card, and it's basically now become, instead of a discard, it's become a draw effect. There's multiple times where I've done it in hero form, and it's discard two cards, and it's essentially been draw two cards because they've both been uh, spider cards, and I've drawn them. So even if, it's, even if it's one, just every card added to your hand means so much because of how low your hand size is that this ends up being a card that you're using every single turn. Uh, the first game I played with Spider, I had this in my opening hand. It was a phenomenal game for Spider. Uh, other games I've had, it's been, you know, I've never had it where it's like the bottom of the deck, but I've had games where it's like a lot later on, and you still get tons of use out of it. It's one of those cards that even when it comes out late, you're like, yeah, I wish I would have had this earlier, but it doesn't slow it down when it hits play. You're using it that turn, you're using it every turn after. So this is one of those cards that you just like cross your fingers as in your opening hand, because it's so good specifically in this deck. All right, then we've got Ejection Protocol. Really cool card here. Uh, zero cost support. Hero action, discard Ejection Protocol because it's, it's a support that's in play. Exhaust each uh, interface upgrade you control. Set your hit point dial to six. Give your identity a tough status card and flip to alter ego form. So this is uh, you know, a very situational card. You're using this in a very specific situation and that is that you've been depleted on your health really low, let's say you've gone down to one or two, uh, and you're on the ropes, you've done everything you possibly could this turn, maybe you've uh, used a bunch of your interface cards already so that you don't have to exhaust them and not have a use out of it, you basically exhausted yourself that turn, and you're ejecting out of the mech suit to go to alter ego form, but it's setting you to six health and giving you a tough status card so you're also protected when you come back. It's, a, it's not always going to be used. I would say that uh, I only had one game where I used it and felt like it was like, okay, that was an effective use of this card. But it was really effective to, to gain that health, essentially, gain a tough status card, and go to, go to Alter Ego for zero is a big deal, especially if you had flipped from Alter Ego that turn. You've essentially got, gained an extra flip, a tough status card, and a healing for potentially five uh, for zero. Really good potential in this card, but again, it's going to be situational. But when, when that situation arrives, you're going to absolutely love this card. All right, and then we've got Spider Command. This is a location card, a one cost support. Two hero actions here. The first one is Exhaust Spider Command and an interface upgrade to draw one card. Second one is Hero Action, Exhaust Spider Command, and choose and discard one card from your hand to ready an interface card. So this has a lot of flexibility. Again, drawing cards is a huge deal. So yes, it might seem steep to exhaust this and exhaust the interface card to just draw a single card, but because your hand size is low, every card counts. It's a big deal, and you can do this every turn. So it's it, maybe it's not so, so steep of a cost. Maybe that's the exact right cost, uh, especially if you have a lot of interface cards out that it's not hindering the way you use sync ratio or you know the, your actual uses of those interface cards. 
cards, then you'll feel a little bit better playing this. The, the other one where you're exhausting Spider Command and then also discarding a card from your hand to ready an interface upgrade, I use a lot less because again, if you have a low hand size already, discarding a card is a pretty uh, big penalty. But there are times where you, you know, just an extra use of an interface card might be what finishes off a villain phase or a minion or, uh, you know, gets you into a better position than you were before. At least you have that option. It's just the one I used a lot less. I was almost always drawing the card with this, just given my low hand size. Okay, interface cards. There are four we're gonna go through. These are obviously very, very important. First one we're gonna look at is Host Spider. This is the most expensive one. Three cost upgrade, hero action, exhaust host spider to ready spider suit. So it's really simple. Every single turn you can now ready spider suit once, which means you're gonna get two uses off of pretty good base stats already that you may have already increased in other ways. Awesome card, obviously. Uh, yes, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's absolutely worth getting it out, not only for the ability, but also for the fact that this is also becoming a resource that you can generate whenever you want, and it's a wild resource. So you can generate that whenever you want with the sync ratio ability. This is a card you hope, again, is in one of your earlier hands to get out early, not only because of all the extra turns you're gonna get with Spider Suit, but again, that wild resource being out there is just gonna add so much to everything you're trying to do. Great card. Then we've got Psychic Link. This is a two cost upgrade. And basically these last three, there's one for thwart, one for attack, one for defense is the way they kind of split it up. So two cost upgrade, hero interrupt when spider suit makes a basic thwart, exhaust this to gain plus two thwart for that thwart. So now your two goes to a four, which is a big jump, especially if you have host spider out because now you're gonna, you can potentially use this to get eight threat removed in a single turn just using uh, Spider's uh, base thwarting ability, which is ridiculously good. That's why these next three cards are so good. You're boosting stats that are already pretty good baseline to numbers that are now phenomenally good for the, the flexibility you already have with things like Host Spider. On top of the fact that these are all interface cards that whenever you're not thwarting that turn or whatever, you don't need the defense one, whatever, you can just use them as resources, which is so, so good. So again, really solid card. Moving on again to the attack, ver or sorry, the defense version. This is a one cost upgrade called Speed Metal Alloy. Hero interrupt when Spider Suit defends against an attack, exhaust Speed Metal Alloy, it gains plus two defense for that, uh, for that defense. So same thing just for the defending but again having four defense is really good this is a protection deck that comes with him uh with her and uh and obviously having high defense is really really good for protection builds uh there are a lot of cards that are not in this deck that if you want to go build really solid protection decks with spider you'll be able to do things where you know you're defending for four and still having an unexhausted hero that you can then use afterwards and then you have host spider anyways to to ready after you um you know exhausting on a defense so lots of possibilities for defense just in a, on a you know protection hero alone is really really solid and lastly of course the attack version two cost upgrade for web fluid compressor when spider suit makes a basic attack exhaust this to get plus two for that attack this is the one i use the most because i am usually on the offensive especially when i'm playing solo uh, having a four attack and then being able to ready with host spider to eight attack every single turn unbelievably good it makes spider uh suit a spider such a force to reckon with especially with the low hand size you might have turns where you don't feel like you can play a lot or you get a lot done and yet you're still going to swing for eight damage just off your base cards as long as you have your kit out so again cannot stress how important it is to get all those interface cards out yeah use the though the what's it called i'm gonna actually remember the name of the card this time all systems go use all systems go as much as you can in the early game to get every single one of these out having the capabilities to be at four threat four defense or four attack and ready spider uh, once every single turn is a huge deal on top of now having an additional four resources for everything you want to pay when you get the entire kit out every single time i did and i think every game i actually did get them all out it was just the first game i paid played i got them out much much quicker um you become so powerful by having that out in a, in a way it kind of does have that iron man uh, iron man effect effect it just you're not gaining a hand size increase as you go you're just gaining all your stats so really really solid cards make sure you do everything you can to get them out okay getting into the protection cards first we have a new ally called daredevil Two cost ally, three health, two thwart, one attack, but two consequential damage on that thwart. Response after Daredevil defends against an attack, move one damage from him to uh, the attacking enemy. Really interesting ability here because what you want to do with Daredevil is essentially have him in play and soak up small hits, especially from like minions in play. So maybe it's not the villain that you're you're blocking with Daredevil. Maybe you're getting Daredevil in play and you have these really pesky minions that you don't want to waste some of your big attacks for four uh, on just taking out a minion that has two health, but it's pesky being there. Now Daredevil can soak up maybe like an attack of one or attack of two, redirect one of those damage back 
to that uh, that minion and essentially even just take out that minion by itself or by himself over time that turn whatever the case may be that that shouldn't be understated like that's a pretty good uh, ally to have out in the game that can basically take one of these requirements off your plate that you have to worry about and deal with it effectively and then also uh, be there if you want to take a huge hit and, and mitigate that from your heroes so I really like this card it has saved me a couple times I shouldn't say saving it's not like it saved me from death but it saved me from having a much slower paced game I was able to do more effective off offense than I otherwise would have. I really like Daredevil. And it's uh, it's Daredevil. It's the closest thing we're getting right now to a Daredevil hero pack. So, uh, Spider-Man Noir is a three cost, a three health card uh, with X ward and X attack. X, however, is equal to the number of face down cards attached to Spider-Man Noir. So you might be wondering how you attach those cards. Well, the response here is after you resolve a treachery, if you control another web warrior card, which you probably will if you're playing this card. So you can almost, if you're playing this in a Web Warrior deck, you can almost take that out, especially if your hero has Web Warrior in it, and just say, after you resolve a treachery, attach that treachery face down here up to a maximum of three. So you're still resolving the treachery. It's not being canceled out, but essentially the next three treacheries you draw, you're going to put on here, and eventually you're going to have a 3-3 three, three in terms of thwart attack on stats. So starts off very low, but has the potential to just build up and get a bunch of high swings on. So you want to kind of play this, not use it early on, unless you really need to, so to soak up a hit, get some treacheries on it, and then start swinging for these big numbers. Um, it takes a little bit sometimes to build up Spider-Man and War. Sometimes you can get really unlucky and treacheries aren't coming out, and then you realize, I can leave this out, continue to try to build up, or I really need a hit uh, soaked up right now so I can do that. And then it feels like, well, was that worth it for a three cost ally just to soak up a hit? So it can have those situations where you're like, ah, I feel it felt a little bit weaker than, than I was hoping. But you can also have those situations where, you know, you are able to build up Noir and suddenly it, it feels really, really good. So not like, you know, not the overall the most powerful ally we've seen, but the potential to be a really solid one if you use it appropriately. All right, three copies of Repurpose. Uh, this is a zero cost event. Discard a tech upgrade you control and all of the, um, oh my, geez, why am I forgetting? Interface cards. All of the interface cards, I believe, are all tech as well. So this is essentially uh, always gonna have a target in Spider as long as you've built up some of your kit. However, that's a steep cost to have to discard one of them. So just, just so you know. Zero cost event, discard one of your tech upgrades, ready your hero and choose thwart, attack, or defense. Until the end of the round, your hero gets plus X of the chosen power, where X is equal to the upgrade's printed cost. So there's a couple situations where this can be great uh, if you really don't need the um, uh, the one that, how, am, how bad am I with names today? My God, I woke up clearly with brain fog here. Uh, the um, Host Spider is the most expensive tech upgrades. So you have three costs there. So the best target you're going to hit with this base deck is that one. So if you don't need it anymore, if you've already done your exhaust or you're ready this turn and you think that you're on the cusp of winning or you can go without it for some reason, you have a way to get it back really quickly with an all systems go or something like that, you can discard it and then search for it again and get it back. Um, you just have to have a way to get it back to hopefully get, you know gain some of your strength back. However, having plus X, uh, plus three essentially, uh, to your chosen stat can be a huge deal, especially because you're readying um, your hero. So if you've already, there's a way to do this where you can essentially like attack for four, use host spider to ready, attack for four again, which is eight, then play repurpose to discard host spider, ready again, and then attack for five again, and you've essentially done 13 damage just on base attack. So there's some great stuff you can do with this card. It is very situational. There was too many times where I had repurpose in my hand, and I just thought, yes, I could use it, but I don't have a, a good way to get one of my tech cards back. Host Spider cannot go right now, so I'm looking at one of the ones that costs two. Do I really need plus two to the, to the base stat uh, right now to 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 do what to accomplish what I want to to change the course of this game? So a, a lot of times, to me, it felt like a card that just like has potential, but it was in my hand, and I thought, eh, there's other things I need to do, or I'm just gonna use it as a resource, especially with a low card hand, uh, a low hand size, so you you have to be the judge. For me, I think if I was rebuilding Spider's deck, Repurpose might, might, might go, even though it has that tech integration, uh, because there's probably better cards I can think of. It has potential, it just, I didn't quite see that potential enough. Then we've got Thwip Thwip. I, I really like this card. This is a two cost event. Hero action, deal one damage to a web warrior character you control, 
place a total of two stun cards on up to two enemies. Uh, one damage is absolutely negligible, especially if that one if that character happens to be Spider Ham who wants to take damage. Uh, that would be amazing in a Spider Ham deck. Obviously, you can't do that unless you're playing a protection Spider Ham deck, but keep that in mind. That would be an amazing combo uh, to basically get a t two stun cards and uh, and get one of the two encounters on your card just for pain too. Uh, awesome, but regardless, dealing one damage to even yourself, especially when you have 14 health, um, or any of your allies, whatever the case may be, to get two stun cards is such a good trade-off, um, and the cost is not too steep. It's just, it, it puts you in such a great situation to be able to stun the, uh, the villain and potentially stun a really bad minion that's out, leave yourself feeling really safe for the next turn after maybe you wanted to go on the all-out offensive and then be able to have another turn to recover after that, or go on the all-out offensive again to win. So it, it facilitates a lot for you. I think it's a really solid card, and uh, it's what I'm going to start including in a lot of protection builds just because it's going to leave me a lot safer, and that's what you want to be in protection builds. You want to be safe to be able to do everything you want to do. All right. Force Field Generator, this is a three cost upgrade. It has six energy counters that it starts with, and those are its uses. Max one per player can have this card. Uh, force Interrupt, when you would take any amount of damage, remove that many energy counters from here. For each energy counter removed this way, prevent one of that damage. So this is a just soaking up a whole bunch of damage. That's basically all there is to it. It's a steep cost on the card, but it has six counters, which is a lot of damage it can soak up. And again, in protection, being able to soak up the 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 damage in other sources that you can save your hero from having to defend all the time or from dying and being able to get more done is a huge deal. There was lots of times where I felt like it, this was in my hand and I thought, oh, like I, yes, this would be great, but it's just a steep cost. Like I, I only have a three card hand or a four card hand and I have this other way to generate resources, but is that really what I want to do with this hand? Like I could do this instead. Like there were so many tough decisions that it, I felt that force field generator often kind of took a back seat and I was finding other ways to, to, to mitigate damage or, or just to defend against it however when I did play it it felt so good to have it out to, to soak that up that I was so grateful that I did so I think you just kind of have to analyze the situation you're in sometimes it's gonna make sense sometimes it's not but it is a really solid card then we've got three copies of spider tingles spider tingle is a one cost upgrade interrupt when you would reveal an encounter card deal one damage to a web warrior character you control if that card is a treachery cancel its win revealed effect and discard spider tingle so you basically have this in play and whenever you want you can take a damage to cancel a treachery card really solid card i mean obviously if you can think of like shadows of the past or or whatever really nasty treachery cards that can come out having this out and it's not a max one per player so you can have multiple ones of these out being able to just have those fail safes and say, every time I get a nasty treachery card that I can't deal with, I'm gonna spider tingle it away. I can take the one damage. One damage is such a better trade off than whatever that card is going to do to me. Uh, really solid card. It, it got tons of use out of me, and also it just always felt really good to uh, have negated what, it was, what would have other been, otherwise been a really nasty situation just by having a card in play that is essentially a fail safe. All right, basic cards. First one we're gonna look at is Spider Ham, the actual ally. So three cost ally, three health, two thwart, two attack with no consequential damage on either one. Play only if you control a web warrior card. Force response after Spider Ham attacks or thwarts, discard the top card of the encounter deck. For each boost icon discarded this way, deal one damage to Spider Ham. So this is a really interesting card because you have no consequential damage, which makes this what could be an infinite ally in theory because you can just keep swinging and swinging and swinging and never taking damage. However, you're taking damage instead of from consequential damage, you're taking it from the boost icons, which could be better, it could be zero, it could be what we come to expect from having been one, or you could kill Spider Ham with using a single attack and feel like, why did I ever play this card? So the absurdity of the cartoon card is kind of back here because you're gonna have these absurd swings where you feel like oh my god this could not have gone any worse or you're gonna have these moments where you're like this ally will just just not leave in play like he is just chipping away and staying in there and he keeps drawing the right cards so it's a very very like random unless you have a, a you know you're playing uh Spider Woman or an, an or a hero that has some kind of cards where you can have some sort of knowledge of what's going on in the deck to be able to kind of predict this a little bit. But otherwise, you're just choosing to lean into the randomness and, and hope it goes your way. And when it does, you'll feel great. And when it doesn't, you're going to wonder why you played this card in your deck. So uh, it really, your enjoyment of this card is going to come down to how uh, what your enjoyment levels or tolerance level is for RNG. Uh, all right. Next up is Spider-Man, the Otto Octavius version. This is the superior Spider-Man, I believe it was. Uh, two cost ally, two health, one thwart, two attack, but uh, two consequential damage on that attack. Play only if, you're, if, you're, if you control a Web Warrior card. After you play Spider-Man from your hand, ready an upgrade you control. If that upgrade has the tech trait, uh, draw one card. So 
This is basically one of those great two cost chump blocker allies that does something when it enters play and then when once it's in play, you're basically just taking a huge hit for yourself. Uh, the fact that in this deck specifically, you want to be using those uh, interface cards, which are all tech cards as much as possible is great because you're gonna be able to um, ready one of those and if that upgrade, or sorry, like you you can write one anyways, but if it has a tech card, you're getting the draw, which is then when this card shines, because to essentially play a two cost ally that's gonna soak up an entire hit from you and you drew a card by playing it, you can almost look at that as having given you one of the resources back. That makes it a one cost ally, uh, really, really solid card. But again, it's just gonna be uh, dependent on the deck you're playing. In Spider specifically, phenomenal card, easy to play. Uh, with a low hand size, you'll never have a problem playing your Gania card back into your hand after you do to sort of mitigate that perfect card for spider uh, yet to, to really make a determination how it is in other heroes but in this deck specifically i think it's such a great fit all right two really cool cards coming up here so the first one is three copies of limitless stamina now they're giving us cards specifically to target heroes that have high hit point values and the only ones i can think of off the top of my head and i'm sure there's more is spider uh hulk and i think um <laughs> i was about to say dave batista uh, that would have been hilarious. Uh, Drax. <laughs> they should have just had it be Drax, and the other side was Dave Batista as the alter ego. Um, that's actually, you know, what they could they could do a um, they could do a movie promo version of some of these heroes, where the hero side is like Captain America, and the, the alter ego side is Chris Evans. Uh, and we're getting on a tangent here. Anyways, Limitless Stamina is play only if your identity has at least fourteen printed. Hit points. So you're never including this in your deck unless you have 14 printed hit points. That makes the heroes that are going to use this very, very thin. Uh, however, the hero action here is ready your hero. So for one cost, you're able to ready your hero. Now, yes, you can imagine with Spider's potential uh, to do such huge damage, such huge thwart, uh, threat removal with uh, the base stats, especially if you have other interface cards available, readying your hero for one is a super attractive thing. It's not always going to be, but I, 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 so I think you basically are only going to ever want to use this card if you have a way to build up your base stats so high that you can basically look at it as like, you know, if you have if you have base four attack, you can look at this as essentially having been one cost deal four damage, which is, is pretty good. And you have three of them in your deck, so that could add up to a bunch of damage just from having them in there. It's really gonna depend on how you built up your base stats. If, you, if you're playing in a way where you're not building them up or you just don't have high base stats, you're probably not gonna play limitless stamina very often. I could be wrong, there could be other fringe scenarios, but I think that's the, the most generic one. So a, guy, a person or a hero like Hulk uh, could have some really interesting ways to utilize this card. So it's neat that we're getting this to be able to now go back to Hulk, a hero that's, you know, uh, always been seemed to, uh, deemed to be, you know, low power or not very good and potentially power Hulk up and have other ways to play. Speaking of that, we have a card with Hulk art on it, and specifically, uh, it would be great in Hulk. One cost upgrade, this is unshakable. Pr play only if your identity has at least 14 printed hit points, and now your identity gains steady. So steady characters require two status cards of the same type to be stunned or confused. Uh, so again, th this is uh, completely, I would say, scenario dependent. Um, if you're playing a scenario where there's lots of ways for you to be stunned or confused, uh, and you're playing a hero like Hulk or like Spider or like, I think it's Drax that has 14 hit points, I could be wrong, but uh, this is a great way to mitigate that for a single cost. So you have to really ask yourself how important is it that you are not taking uh, stun and confused counters and how often would they be coming your way otherwise. If you find that it's like, hey, you know, maybe once a scenario I'm getting one, you're, why include this card in your deck? You probably don't need to. You probably figure out other ways to mitigate that. However, if you're playing a scenario where the thing you're always coming up against is that I want to do a bunch of attacks and I continue to get stunned, Here's an easy way to mitigate how often you're being stunned. So an interesting card, but it is going to be a bit uh, fringe. It's going to be a bit, you know, situational depending on when you're going to use it. Okay, then we've got uh, the obligation, Inherited Burden. So this is a pretty standard one. Give to Penny Parker. You may flip to Alter Ego. Choose to either exhaust Penny Parker and remove this from the game. Very simple. Or choose and discard one interface upgrade you control to discard this obligation. This is a really standard obligation. There's really not much to say. The only thing I'll say uh, is that the second one, discarding an interface card, is really bad. However, if you do have an all systems go in your hand and you didn't necessarily need to refresh them all, even though you probably want to, you can just do the bottom one uh, to not have to uh, exhaust your, your hero card, your ally card, your ally card, your alter ego card, uh, to basically uh, get that card back. Uh, but more often than not, I think it's more just worth it just to do the top one. Um, but having the option on the bottom is great. It's just you kind of do want those interface cards. 
Okay, now we've got more BS, but all, I think every letter stands for something else, and I'm not sure what that is because uh, I'm not familiar with the spider character in the comics. Uh, so more BS is the Nemesis minion, six health, two scheme, two attack, force response, after the engaged hero generates any number of resources, deal an equal amount of damage to that hero. This one is super, super nasty because everything you're doing with that low, car, low hand size is generating resources uh, with your, um, Sync, sync ratio ability, and this is basically not preventing you from doing that, but every time you do, you're taking it as damage. Now you have 14 health, so you can probably do that and be okay for a little bit, but you're also gonna wanna deal with this really fast so that it doesn't add up like crazy, and suddenly you're, you've realized, hey, I've taken seven damage just from trying to generate resources. So a pretty nasty card with high hit points and a pretty decent stat line as well. You're probably gonna wanna deal with this uh, as quick as possible. Then we've got Giant Monster Attack. So Giant Monster Attack uh, says, it's a side scheme with four, uh, threat that comes on it, <coughs> I have to cough, um, as the crisis icon, as an additional cost to thwart this scheme, you must spend an energy resource. So it's just gonna be, uh, you know, it, 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 I don't wanna say it's not that nasty, because it could be, but it really is only gonna be nasty if the main scheme's out of control, and this is preventing you from thwarting it, because otherwise having the, the caveat that you can't, um, you have to spend energy resources to thwart against this. Uh, you might not even need to thwart against this if you don't care about the crisis icon. If you're in a position where all you're doing is dealing damage or you're the main scheme is under control, you might be okay for a while. But again, at some point you're gonna have to get back to the main scheme and then you're gonna have to hope you have the right resources in your hand uh, to be able to do that or you have the right interface ones out uh, like Host Spider that has a wild resource that you can generate. So uh, you know, not too, too nasty. I think it's pretty uh, manageable. If that had been an, an extra encounter card, I feel like it would have been a lot worse. But with a crisis icon, I don't think it's too nasty. And then we have three copies of Energy Drain uh, as the treachery. Uh, this is when revealed alter ego, choose to either spend two energy resources or exhaust your identity. Uh, when revealed in hero form, choose to either spend two energy resources or take three damage. So everything here has to do with energy resources. Uh, this is, you know, it's not overly powerful, but it is really annoying, especially because there's three copies of this. You're gonna see it a lot with these cards that have been added to the deck, and you're always either gonna be exhausting your identity or taking three damage if you don't have those two energy resources. And there's gonna be times where you just put luck of the draw, you just don't have them, and so you have to just take three damage or you have to exhaust, and that's gonna potentially slow down everything you wanna do, or you're gonna have to use Host Spider just to get you out of that uh, position. So it could be a really nasty card. It's not it's the nastiest treachery we've seen, but it's definitely gonna be one that by the end of the game, you're probably gonna be super annoyed if you've seen it quite a few times. Lastly, we have the extra leadership card that was included. We got three copies of it. Uh, this is for your deck building purposes. This is Clarity of Purpose, a one cost upgrade attached to a friendly character, a max one per character. Hero resource, exhaust this card and deal one damage to uh, the attached character to generate a mind resource. A uh, pretty simple card. Uh, it's obviously only for leadership, but having this uh, additional way to always generate wild resource is obviously really good, especially for situations where you need to generate a specific type of resource. This just gives you a, another way to do that. Um, it, it does seem like a really good card. I don't know how often uh, it's going to find its way into many leadership builds. I think it's gonna be uh, very deck dependent, uh, but I do like uh, cards that just generate you a wild resource. That is really important. It's one of the reasons why Spider Ham is so powerful. Having that on this uh, leadership card that can be used across many decks is really cool. And that is it. That is Spider. So that is the review. And I honestly think that if it wasn't for the fact that Spider was re released at the same time as Spider Ham, I would have been way more ecstatic about this deck because it is a very powerful deck and it is really cool to overcome the low hand size in such an effective way. It was just that Spider Ham was so ridiculously over the top in some ways and 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 fun and and, and wild that I, I most of my attention kept gravitating towards how that was going and I forgot that this is just a really solid hero pack that is really carrying its weight as well. You really have to find a way to get over that low hand size. In hero form, having only three cards is such a detriment so you really only want to be spending a lot of time in hero form once you've built up your kit. You want to be using all, all systems go really early on. You want to be utilizing spending time in alter ego and then being able to exhaust the mechs to draw extra cards, to draw into them more frequently. It's going to potentially start slower, but once you've built up that kit, you're going to feel more confident spending time in hero form, and you're going to be getting way more done, especially when you then draw into all systems go and you're able to refresh everything. Suddenly, you're going to be able to get a bunch more resources from that to potentially play all three cards that are in your hand if you want and use them to boost whatever base stats you want 
along with Host Spider, to potentially be swinging for up to eight damage a turn or eight threat removal a turn. So there's a lot of power level here. You just have to kind of have the patience to, to let it build up to there. But it is a really, really fun hero to play in the same way that for me, Iron Man and Iron Heart are very fun because you're sort of building that up and having to mitigate some of these, you know, low hand sizes or low power, whatever the case may be. Very, very cool hero pack. Uh, and very different from spider Ham, which I think is really, really good. So that is my review of Spider. Those are the two hero packs that released uh, in this past Friday from when I'm putting this out. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of Spider and even which uh, hero pack you prefer. Did you like spider Ham and all of its overpowered glory? Or was the, the you know, was Spider more, was Spider more interesting and fun for you to play, kind of solving that puzzle and in a more traditional Marvel Champion style? Let me know what you think in the comments. Otherwise, I will be back whenever another hero is released, back for Marvel Champions content at least, when any, another hero preview is released, uh, or then when Mutant Genesis and the accompanying two hero packs come out, Cyclops and Phoenix, uh, and I think about two months' time, sometime in the fall. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.